let me begin by giving you a bit of an understanding of where I'm coming from. So I'm back here in the US. Um, I'm in Boston. We have a lot of indoor, outdoor mall spaces, different types of things that I, you know, being the sort of service sensor geek I am, I, I've been frequenting since things have reopened. Some trends are clear no matter whether I'm at an indoor mall, outlet mall, what have you, luxury area, um, is that stores are closing. Um, some are closing for good, um, not just one or two locations, but many. Um, those that are trying to determine which they close are having a lot of trouble because what might have been a really good downtown mall location now is suffering compared to that outdoor lifestyle center in the suburbs. You don't have any data on that though to make that determination right now that's really thoughtful and accurate picture. This is what we have today. This person, full time, kind of right, standing right there. It's expensive. Um, we found at this point having that person full time there instead of like a, a, an occupancy solution with a, with a display and a monitor and a, and a simple 3D sensor is really adding up. In about three weeks, conservatively, you could make up the cost of, of, a, of a full solution installed at a medium sized store with, with one or two entrances and exits. It's also inaccurate. People are human. They get distracted. They even if they have something on their phone, then there's Instagram. Um, there's customers coming up and asking for help or locating something. And it's really just not safe. You have you have someone who's always trying to corral people into a line or around. They're coming to the store and they're counting, they're wall walking past them. That person is unduly exposed. And so are the customers who have this sort of additional touch point they want to be they, they're forced to deal with in a manual sense. Putting in a 3D stereoscopic sensor is sustainable in the long term. These sensors identify the human shape, the head and the shoulder height differential, and that's how we identify an exact human body, not a tall cart of, of items or, or luggage or anything like that. The head and shoulders aren't going anywhere, uh, and so that's a, that's a sustainable solution. The sensors are accurate, 98% um, to be exact. Uh, we've had years of refinement, not just in, in retail environments, but airports, churches, libraries, museums, universities, as Anne said. Um, all of which the, have slightly different means and needs, and the sensor is able to capture and, and, re, and refine itself to all of those. Solutions also reliable. Um, many of you you know this as, as integrators who are here on the call today, um, but it's it's not sustainable. The light changes throughout the different times of the year. Uh, it's built with housings that can handle the coldest environment of an IKEA in Russia to the heat of a taxi stand at a store in Dubai. Um, there's really not an environment, tall, short uh, ceilings that, that it can't handle. Jumping into what an occupancy solution looks like in this day and age, it's really quite simple. It's very straightforward and they're not new. They're just new to certain environments and certain audiences. We had backend systems for many stores for a long time that look at their own occupancy, their own footfall, um, different times of the day, different things, but it was never customer facing. Now customers want to see that, they want to know that. Green for go inside, red for, for hold back, it's simple. Aldi, Albertsons, all these types of environments that never never really engaged in this have come to Zovis and, and equipped their stores, knowing that simple and efficient is the name of the game. They want to know how many people can be in at a time, they want their customers to know it, to be confident, comfortable, and ensure that overcrowding doesn't occur, and that Thoughtful cleaning cycles occur in the space, in restrooms, wherever in the, in the store. Beyond just uh, the concept here with occupancy and density, we've taught our sensors with their secondary AI function to be able to detect face masks. Someone walks in, they got, a, they got a green, and there's another man without. So he's instructed to put in a face mask. Very straightforward. He had one in his pocket, didn't remember. You can see in the smaller view the, the, the bubbles that are this, the, the height measurements of the people. Again, it's a head and shoulder height, as many of you know as integrators on the call. Um, and it's going to, to make that distinction. So of course, revenue numbers 
are clearly showing which store performs well and which doesn't. To improve the overall performance, it might make sense, or you must probably close down stores. When indeed it comes to closing down stores, it might be easy just to pick out the low performers and actually base the decision on the financial numbers. But to be successful in the long term, retailers need to understand why some of the stores are performing well and others don't, and how this can be improved. So for the most part, revenue obviously is generated by visitors in a single store, and how these visitors can be converted to actually buy within the store. So to come back to our question, how to use people counting technology to improve store performance, use the footfall data generated by census. The case study is based on an international footwear chain. The chain has quite some time ago introduced Xobis technology and then just recently rolled it out internationally to a couple of hundred stores. The question is how to improve the conversion to actually get it closer to the performance of the Salem store. Well, clearly conversion is an issue within the store, so it needs to be fixed within the store. One thing the retailer in this case study did is they analyzed conversion numbers throughout the day and throughout the week. They recognized that during times of bad conversion, they actually had the wrong staff in place. Another problem was that during certain peak times, they had a lot of visitors but didn't have enough staff on the floor. Based on the visitor numbers, they were also able to improve the staffing during those peak hours. You can learn a lot from best-in-class stores and apply this to your stores that are not doing so well. So one thing they did and recognized it is that other stores uh, had different merchandise and the availability of inventory, and they could apply this to other stores with worse conversion. Also, other stores had different floor planning that just converted customers better. And of course, a lot of other stores also had different kinds of promotions or in-store marketing campaigns to help them better convert customers within the store. Compared to the other issue earlier, this is not an in-store issue because we don't have uh, bad conversion within the store. It's an out-of-store issue because we need to lure more customers in the store. So one thing the area manager in this case study did is actually also analyze the visitor numbers throughout the day. And what they recognized is they had a lot of visitors always around the closing time because they had the closing or in general the opening hours um, managed for every store. And, and, and not individually. So what they did after analyzing the visitor numbers, they changed the opening hours individually depending on the peak times of the individual stores. By simply adjusting those opening hours, they were able to gain a lot more visitors within these stores. Again, they also tried to learn from stores with high footfall overall. Some of those stores just had better window design uh, and marketing out of the store to lure customers into the store. And some of the stores or the areas just had better local marketing campaigns. Of course, you need to do local social media marketing and also local events and whatever to target your demographic and lure it into your store when it's not located on a high street. Going back to the question of technology and complex solutions, um, there's obviously a lot more information you can gain to even analyze further. And we have specialized with our new AI-based um, sensors that we can actually supply the features that help you to gain more actionable insights. So if we're talking about gender, that helps you identify your target group, really, or the staff exclusion to give you the real counts and not actually diffuse it when staff is walking in and out, um, showing this as visitor. Uh, view direction, another feature that is wonderful for, for further insight, especially for marketing and, and communication, because you can find out where your customer is actually focusing his attention on. The in-store tracking again is showing you which area of the store is being frequently used and walk through other areas probably being 
a bit cold, so customer journey can be actually recognized with tracking. The queue detection will help you in case you're understaffed at the cashier desk to make sure that no customer is leaving because they have to wait for too long. And obviously the group count is giving you um, the real conversion rates because um, if a family of four is coming in and only one is paying, that doesn't mean that you have converted badly. It's just that a whole group was in. And if you know about it, that makes it more easy to understand.